Hi, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in this Better Beater episode to unlock some of the useful ways to use Permalac, a liquid glue that is great to coat as well as has numerous other things that you can use it for. In addition, make sure if you are watching to comment below and touch on your favorite uses and the ways that you love to use the Permalac product. The most popular use for the Permalac product is to paint the back of crystals. Now crystals, when they come, they generally will have a silver foil or a backing. That's actually what gives the crystal a lot of their shine and mirror essence that gives that awesome kind of glittery bling effect. However, sometimes this silver coating, because it is a coating on glass, does come off or can rub off. There's some instances where the designs that you're using, like the earrings that I have on, do not show the back of the Chaton, the Cabochon, the Rivoli at all. However, if you do have it exposed, you'll want to take your Permalac, open up your bottle. It's always better to do multiple coats rather than just one single thick coat and literally paint it on to the back of the design. Let it dry and do a simple second coat. For this, I am using the gloss coating, but you can even use that nice, this is the semi-gloss, you can also use the matte coating for the back of that because it doesn't really matter if you're doing matte or shiny. In addition to coating the back of the crystals, another common use is to actually coat some of the more temperamental beads that are glass and then are coated or covered in the Czech Republic. The halo finish or some of the other finishes because it is a coated glass, can have a little bit of a rub off effect. This is the absolute main reason that we decided to explore, find the best solution, and carry the Permalac brand. Because of the kind of temperamentalness of some of the Czech glass, and make sure that you check out the blog that we have written on it that Anna did, as well as the Better Beater on the way that different beads will hold their finish, you can take the Permalac after the project is made and simply paint it on like I did with the last one. If you have a matte bead and you want to keep that matte effect, that's where you're going to pick up the matte coating and paint on with that matte coating. You can also do your buttons or areas of your beads where it's going to have a lot of rub on the wrist or a lot of tension among the piece. In addition to coating those, you can also coat the back of some of your cabochons. Some of them are a thin paper, so you want to make sure, again, just to use a nice thin base coat let that dry, and then apply another coat as well. In addition, the Permalac can act as a bonding agent to take something like a nice setting, drop a little glue of that in on the applicator, push down a picture that you want to use, and cover it up again with more of that clear Permalac. That will lock in the image or the picture that you're using if you're going to pour resin on top of it. So that's another use. Another thing that you may think of is its use as a hypoallergenic. So if I want to use these awesome antique brass little bezel earrings and I want to take my Permalac and seal in a picture here and then pour a little bit of resin or even glue in a cabochon in this setting, you might have an ear allergy or an ear sensitivity to using a metal that's not sterling silver or not gold filled. Simply paint on either the Permalac, the matte, or the semi-gloss onto the back of the earring and that will protect that metal from your actual ear. If you have a lot of sensitivity, you may also want to paint the back of that stud earring or likewise in on your ear wire where it's going to go through. Now it is going to have the opportunity that it will eventually rub off, especially if you wear the pieces a lot, so you'll just want to reapply it. One little bottle of the Permalac is going to last a long time. In addition to being able to use as a hypoallergenic, you can also use it so the product does not tarnish, especially if you're using a copper or a sterling silver. Painting this on will prevent that air and the salt in the air as well as chemicals that you're wearing in the body from actually tarnishing the product and patinaing it to copper or tarnishing it into that patinaed silver. So keep in mind that's a great use for it as well. One of the other cool uses that a lot of people don't think about is that you can actually use the matte to make beads matte. So here in this example, I have a little piece of the Vatican View bracelet, 
And it was just sitting around and I've been using it to test different ideas and different things. So you can see here, I've used a shiny bead, the jet bronze for the pinch bead, and then the crystal amber as my regular round duo bead. Now, if you look closely, you can see this bead here, this bead here, this round duo, and this round duo. You can see how they're not shiny anymore. They're actually matte. This is an effect of using the matte permalac on the actual shiny beads. So you can paint this on to get an actual matte finish when you've already had a shine finish to it. Likewise, you can take the semi-gloss and make it a little bit shinier. So here in the aluminum cup button, I have, it is a matte finish with that aluminum coating on it. If I continue to add a little bit more of my semi-gloss Permalac, it's gonna make this shinier and shinier till it looks like it has a shine coating rather than a matte. So you wanna think about the Permalac as going two ways. If you have something that is matte and you wanna make it shiny, go ahead and pick up the bottle of the semi-gloss and use that to make it more shiny. If you wanna make something that is shiny matte, pick up the matte and use it that way. There are tons of different uses for the Permalac in your jewelry making and also just in general uses around the house. I'm sure you have tons and tons of suggestions and ideas for it, so make sure you do comment below and help out the beading community with all of your wonderful ideas. In addition to these uses, the other times that I do use it is if you have some eslon or some end thread that is coming apart, that is fraying a little bit, if I have it handy, I'll just dab on a little bit on the end of the piece to make sure that it works like as a needle that I can put my beads on and use it as a protective coating. It is a liquid glue is the way that you wanna think about it. And it has a nice applicator brush, almost like a nail brush, that it comes in these little nail polish containers for easy access and so that it doesn't dry out. There are so many different uses to stiffen up your projects, to coat them, to protect them, and really to add some shine that you can use this Permalac for. Again, make sure to comment, give a little thumbs up too if you like the Permalac, and also comment letting us know for different uses that we may not have included because I'm sure you have some creative ones. As always, thank you so much for watching this Better Beater on the Permalac actual liquid glue coating. Remember, if you do have any other suggestions, like I just said, comment below and let us know what those are. Also, if you need any Permalac, make sure that you check out our website and you can get it from us there. As always, the Better Beater episodes are meant to make you informed and to make you better at your craft. Thanks so much for joining me. If you haven't checked them out, make sure you subscribe and watch all the rest of the Better Beater episodes. And happy beating, everyone.